Hello everyone, welcome to another scripting tutorial. Today, we are going to be remaking doors in Roblox. Obviously, it's not gonna be one-to-one -one symmetrical with the actual doors, but I'm just going to be going through the basics of how you can actually make your own doors type of game. This got suggested to me in the comments. So, I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and um, show you guys how to do it. This is going to be a multiple part series, meaning it's going to be split up into different videos. This is going to be the first part of how to generate different rooms because in doors, it's not the same every time they get generated. They're different rooms every time. You're not going to have the same, you know, 50 rooms in a row as you did the previous playthrough. So today I'm just going to be going through how to set it up and how to code it so that rooms can get generated. So let's start with the setup. Basically what we have here, we have a start room and this is just a, a, a normal, you know, box kind of thing with, a, with you know, a basic room. It has a light in it. Um, what's important is we're going to need the entrance. So what the entrance is, is it's a, um, try to make it the, keep it the same, like width almost as your walls. These, all these models will be linked in the description. And if you want them just to experiment, I'll link to a model in the description um, in case you guys get confused or anything. So what you wanna do is I would say when building your rooms is make sure to keep um, studs one on so that you know like, you know, what you're measuring or just make sure you keep like the studs on. So like, let's leave it at 0.5, you'll know to measure 0.5. So when you have like a door, what you want to do is you want to move it the same amount out as your wall width, because if you don't, then the walls will get inter, like they'll get they'll get layered over each other when you're generating them. So for the start room, that's basically all you need, you know, spawn point. And um, next up, what we're gonna do is we have the long and short hallway. So basically, you can make different hallways. Um, I wouldn't make any hallways with curves yet because you know that is going to come in a, another part on how to make those because that can get really tricky because you need to make sure that, you know, the previous um, room wasn't a right turn or a left turn. They can't be the same in a row or else they'll, you know, go into each other. But right now, all you really want, you just really want a short one and a long one. That's what I'm going to be using. That's the one that'll be linked in the description to the model. Um, and so basically all this is, it's just a long, so I'll show you the short one. The short one's just pretty much the same thing as the start room except um, what it has is it has two entry points. So this the start room only has one entry point. The other room, the I mean the short hallway only, you know, has it has two points. One is called the exit, which is the same, which is at the same, um, it's not, it's not pushed forward like this one is. It's the same one here. And then it has another one called the entrance, which is pushed forward a little bit, uh, you know, same as the uh, start room right here. And basically what these are going to do is when we generate the uh, rooms, we're going to connect this one to this one so that it, you know, is like a seamless transition between the rooms. So I'll just go ahead and show you what an example of this looks like. I have it all set up right now. So I'll just go ahead and click run to show you what it looks like, the end product. As you can see here, we have randomly generated rooms all the way down. And we have 10 different rooms. And obviously you can see if you click run again, you're not gonna have the same ones. This, you know, generated five different long hallways in a row. In a future part, we're gonna make it so that it can't do that, where it can't generate the same, you know, five rooms in a row. But for now, we'll just get the base generation script working. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do it. Next thing you're gonna wanna do you're gonna to wanna to make a folder in the workspace like this called generated rooms. Um, also, by the way, take your long and short hallways or whatever hallways you have and make a folder inside replicated storage called possible hallways. And then when you do that, go ahead and paste your uh, long and short hallway in there. Now let's go into the script. So here's the script. It's pretty simple. It's not very long. So I'll just go ahead and explain. I'll just go ahead and go through it and explain what each of it does. So 
what we have here we have local replicated storage game colon get service replicated storage that's just getting the replicated storage we're just getting the possible hallways folder right here and we're getting the generated rooms folder right here and then we're setting the previous room to workspace dot start point so the previous room right now is this this is what it's gonna you know go off of it's gonna start off of this room so yeah function generate room so now this is the actual function to generate each room so basically what we're doing here, we're, we're, we're going to type function generate room. Um, and then we're going to get a random room, right? So we're going to go local random room equals possible hallways, get children. This is the folder possible hallways um, right here with all our hallways in it. And uh, I'll just go ahead and type this part out. So we're going to go like this possible hallways colon get children math dot random. So what this is doing is just basically getting like a random number, pretty much. We're gonna do one, because it's gonna go one to however many rooms you have. And then we're gonna go number, so the number sign would be just a hashtag. Number of possible hallways, colon, get children. So what this is doing, local random room, we're getting the children, we're doing random one, however many rooms are in here. So if you had like five different hallways in here, it would go through each five and it would get a random one out of the five. So it might get two, it might get four, it might get three, it might get five. It, it's just, it's a random one every time. And then basically, and then right here, we're just cloning the room it gets. So we take the random room and then we just clone it right here. Then what we're doing, we're setting the cloned room's primary part. So what the primary part is, is if you see, if you go and put this in here, make sure you, ha you have all these grouped, by the way. Um, make sure you have all the hallways grouped. Um, if you go into a model, you scroll down and you see the primary part. Right now it's not set, but we're gonna set it in the script. Primary part basically determines the model's primary part, you know, what the model's, how to explain it? The mod, the whole model's position basically is what we're doing. That's basically what we're, we're setting. So we're gonna go back in our generation script. So we're setting the primary part to the cloned room's exit. Remember that, this thing? Where is it? Right here. We're setting the primary part to the exit. So that when we generate, we put this here. And that's what creates a seamless transition. So we're gonna pivot the clone room. Let's say it's in a different direction, right? Like let's say it's let's say it's like this. We don't we obviously don't want it like that. We want it to when we run it, we want it to have we want it to be one all the way through, you know? So what we're going to do is, let me just make sure this says possible hallways up here, not underscore hallways. That was a mistake by me. You can see here. So you see how they're all in like the same line. Nothing's like off to the set and all that stuff. So we're pivoting the clone, the, the clone rooms, um, the whole, the whole model, we're pivoting it. So it's, you know, on the same line, basically. We're pivoting it to the end. We're pivoting. We're pivoting it to the entrance. So, if we had a, a you know a curved room to the right, like you know, like let's say we had like a curved room. Obviously, this is not a curved room. But let's say we had a curved room to the right, right? And this part hooked up here, and then it curved like this. We're getting. We're pivoting it to whatever this is. So we pivot to whatever that's facing. So we pivot this way. So that's basically what that is doing. It's just pivoting the hallway to the entrance. We're, uh, then we're taking the clone room. We're putting its parent into this this folder right here. Um, and what we're doing here is we're just setting the entrance and exit transparency to one, so that they're not. Um, you don't see like an ugly gray thing in between each one. We're just setting the transparency to one. And then once all that's done, we set this to the clone room. So we're setting the previous room to the clone room, so that. Um, Cause if we if we keep let's say let's say we didn't let's say we didn't have this right let's say we we uh you know got that out it all of them would just generate next to this because this is the start point and this is what we have the previous uh room set to so they're just all going off this so they gen it generated all 10 rooms off of the start point so at the end of the function we set the previous room to the clone room to actually you know have it build off of one each other like that.
and then basically what this code does, it just however many rooms you want. So let's say you wanted only like five rooms, set this to, ten, to five, and it would only generate five rooms. Let's say you wanted a shit ton, right? Let's say you wanted like 20 rooms. Let me click the run. It would generate 20 rooms. As you can see, there's 20 different rooms. So all we do here is we do four I, I'll type this one out, four I equals one comma, however many rooms you want. So if you really want to get savvy, you do local num rooms. And you can set it to however many rooms you want, right? So you'll set it to like five, right? And then you can just do num rooms do. And we're just gonna run the function however many times. So you set it to five, it'll have five rooms. You set it to, you know, 10. It'll have 10. So that's how you do that. That's basically how you do that. put a little note there for when I upload this as a model so that's basically how you use the model I'm gonna put it in the description if you want to you know do your own stuff you can follow along with this um, tutorial and you know go along and if you have any questions or concerns on like how to use something or you know so let's say you have like an error or some bug that you know is not working um, you can leave them in the comments I'll try to answer every single concern comment whatever you have and um yeah the second part to the series hopefully come to, coming out soon i want to actually add like stuff to search so like so like drawers and like cabinets and stuff that you can search here and uh you know find items and stuff and obviously we're gonna have like the curved rooms so that they're not it's not just in a straight line because and just a straight line would be pretty boring but um yeah we have some lights here to light it up you can decorate the rooms however you want just make sure they're all in the same model. Um, yeah, that's basically all you need. Just make sure they're all grouped in the same model. Um, and yeah, that is the first part of how to make a doors game on Roblox. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.